Hey, so what's the rental situation look like in Idaho? Let's talk about that next. Hey, Dave Edwards, Treasure Valley Dave here. And I was going through my emails again, and I came across this story. And I want to talk about it with you, see what you thought, and I'll let you know what I think. Wow. Idaho renters face bigger shortage of affordable homes, National Housing Report shows. Well, that sounds not good, huh? So according to um, this recent report, Idaho has 38 affordable rental homes for every 100 households with extremely low incomes. So uh, low-income renters in Idaho have less affordable housing options than in previous years. Well, that doesn't sound very good. Um, according to this report, 38 affordable rental homes for every 100 households with extremely low income, and that's a decrease from last year where there is 42 affordable rental homes for every 100 households, and there was 40 in 2021. Huh. So what would happen in uh, 2022? I don't know. The report includes data from all 50 states. Um and extremely low income is apparently identified as someone that earns at or below the federal poverty level or 30% of their area median income. All righty. So that's, I guess that's extremely low. Um, then they talk about, was there an impact from COVID? And um, according to the research, there are approximately 40,000 extremely low income renter households in Idaho but only about 15,000 affordable rental homes are available. And um, so let's stop there for a second. So this talks about all of Idaho, not just the Treasure Valley. And as you probably know, um, buying real estate in the Treasure Valley, particularly Boise and Meridian, Nampa, it's not as cheap as it used to be, right? Although, and this has been true kind of all along, the further out you get from Boise, the cheaper things get. So when we're talking, there's 44 counties here in uh, Idaho. And so it's quite possible that some of these counties, you could buy a house for 50,000 bucks. And it and maybe, you know, your rent up there would be like 400 bucks. We don't really know because it doesn't break it down to just a Treasure Valley. So just kind of keep that in mind. Um, families and children thrive when... They live in affordable homes, but too many Idaho families don't have that option right now due to high rents and an insufficient supply of affordable and available houses statewide. Again, with the statewide thing. But doesn't that sound like anybody? If a house isn't affordable, it's you're not going to have uh, you're not going to be really thriving. Um, according to the organization, a home is this is an organization that helps. Um, uh, extremely low-income people find rental houses. According to the organization, a home is considered affordable when a family spends no more than 30% of their income on rent. Dang, sounds like Dave Ramsey talking right there. Nice. Um, this report shows that 66% of the extremely low-income renter families in Idaho are facing severe rent burden. Well, I believe that's probably true. So we've identified a problem... Um, that people aren't making enough to rent where they want to rent. So what are some options? I guess one option is for the federal government to step in and provide millions of dollars. Um, Idaho residents are facing a serious housing crisis for which federal funding cannot solve. But they still take the money anyway, right? I guess it's just like a Band-Aid over the problem. Um, the Building Network said it supports policies that create long-term housing solutions, such as the Housing Trust Fund, a program that allocates funds to states to help them preserve and build more affordable homes across their state. All righty. Investing in the National Housing Trust Fund will promote the creation and preservation of affordable homes and incentivize Idaho developers to build more affordable homes across our state and ensure all the Idahoans have access to safe and affordable homes, the press release said. All right, so a couple issues there. Um, yeah, I mean, it's certainly want everybody to have a nice place to live. Um, everyone's not going to get a, a palatial mansion when you can't afford it. So don't stretch yourself. Um, move. I mean, I've done that before. I couldn't afford to live someplace, and then I moved. But throwing in this this housing trust fund, which 
probably going to be getting um, you know funding backed by um, different major organizations like the Gates Foundation or the Soros Foundation or things like that. It could be a lot of funds from the federal government, which has already been paying money. And so if they create these low-income houses, what's, what's history show us that that's done before? It brings in people that can't afford anything. What kind of people are those? The kind of people that sometimes they don't go to work. And I'm not, you know, there's always the exceptions and stuff like that. But as we've seen historically, downtown Detroit, downtown Chicago, Philadelphia, wherever, um, people don't go to work. They don't make that much money, at least not taxable money, right? And then they get to live in these houses where it really concentrates an element that can lead to, you know, crime. And then for the innocent people that live in those, then they have to suffer through that. So if we're trying to help the, the low-income people out, maybe that's not the best way to do it. So what also happens is, um, let's say, they the, the state government comes out and says, you can't build a house that costs more than X amount of money. Well, some builders can't make that work, and they'll go out of business, stop building. So there's going to be a shortage of supply. That means the houses that are still available are going to shoot way up in price. And the houses that are currently rental houses um, they're going to shoot way up in price and value and rent because of supply and demand. So by trying to help somebody out, we're going to make their life worse. Um, and put the, they're going to incentivize, incentivize Idaho developers to build more. That means a builder, a developer isn't going to get a permit to build a community unless they comply with some bureaucrats. Um, that doesn't sound like it's going to be good for anybody when it comes to housing. Do you? So anyway, that's just some thoughts. Um, I do remember, too, during the corona thing, didn't Biden say, hey, if you're a renter, you don't have to pay rent? And I think in California that went on for like two years, right? Um, where was the boo-hoo then? I don't know, but I don't think that helped the situation any else out either. So like in California, essentially what happened was the big, like BlackRock, you know, huge investment fund, they go out and they buy up all these houses. Mom and pop um, landlords, you know, you got one or two houses and you're trying to provide a nice, safe, clean place for renters. Well, you couldn't make it because your renters didn't have to pay you for a couple of years. Mortgage company, they didn't see it like that. They said, oh, yeah, you still owe. So you had to sell the house. I went to BlackRock. BlackRock has it. So now all these rentals are becoming part of this huge mega for-profit type of a thing where they're going to, you know, they don't care about the people. They want their money. And... um the people that needed the help, everyone's crying and say, oh, let's help them out. And then the stuff that gets done actually hurts them in the long run. Isn't that just about how government typically works for about anything? I mean, well, anyway, we could go all day on that. Dang, I'm starting to sound like Joe, you know, that one guy, Corn Pops Red. Anyway, hey, if you like this video, it wasn't a really good one to like, but uh, please give us a like, hit that uh subscribe button that helps out so much and well until next time it's treasure valley dave looking forward to helping you get home